Okay guys, we're going to continue with the covalent bond. So uh, what is actually a covalent bond? So studies of covalent bonds was widely developed since Lewis suggested that a chemical bond exists in the hydrogen gas occurring by sharing an electrons between the two hydrogen atoms. So since each hydrogen has only one electron, now in order to achieve duplet, so both of the hydrogen share one of their electrons inside them and eventually forms a sharing pair of electrons. So this sharing pair of electron is also called as a covalent bond. So a bond in which two electrons are shared by two atoms and the electron pairs of the bond between the two hydrogen atoms is also called as the bonding pair electrons. So this is what it refers to the bonding pair electrons. So in a covalent bond, each electron is shared by, uh, is in a shared pair, is attracted to the nuclei of both atoms. So this attraction holds the two atoms together and responsible for the formation of covalent bond in other molecules. So usually a Lewis structure is a representation of covalent bonding in which sharing electron pairs are shown either as a line or as a pair of dots between two atoms and lone pairs are shown as the pair of dots of individual atoms. So only valence electrons are shown in the Lewis structure. So for example, you have fluorine molecule. So fluorine molecule has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So the 1s are already in a shell which is closest to the nucleus so they do not participate in the bonding formation. So uh, on, in fluorine atom, which has the 7 valence electron of 2s2 to 2 b 5 so therefore each fluorine atom needed one electron to achieve octet configuration which is ns2 and p6 so for each of the fluorine atoms they share their single electrons in between them and eventually form a covalent bond so this bond in here is as we described just now is the bond pair electron while here this one is what we call as a lone pair electrons okay So in here you can see that fluorine now has two, four, six, eight electrons, while fluorine here also have two, four, six, eight electrons in here. So with this, both of the fluorine atoms are able to achieve octet. Now as for oxygen, oxygen has the electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2b4. So to achieve stable configuration of ns2 and b6, so each oxygen atom needed two electrons. Hence, when two oxygen atoms interact, they share not only one, but two electrons in between each other as described in the diagram below. So making use of the two electrons in each of the oxygen atom, they share two electrons in between them. Eventually, when two electrons are formed in kingdom, so this will form what we so-call as a double bond. Okay. okay, so when double bond is formed, if you look carefully, you have 2, 4, 6, 8 for this oxygen, so 2s2, 2p6. For this oxygen, 2, 4, 6, 8, also 2s2, 2p6. So for the structure atoms, uh, from the structure of oxygen molecule form, each oxygen atom share two electrons to form a double bond in order to achieve octet configurations. As for nitrogen, nitrogen has the electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So in both of them require three electrons to achieve octet configuration of SN2, ns2 and p6. So in this case, each nitrogen atom share three electrons in order to form what we so-called as a triple bond. So uh, this is how nitrogen share its three electrons in here. So once nitrogen share three of its electrons to form a triple bond in here. Okay, so this is a triple bond here. Yeah? Okay, you can see that the total number of electrons for the nitrogen is 2, 4, 6, 8, so 2s2 to be 6, 2, 4, 6, 8, so 2s2 to be 6. So here are other examples of uh, molecules that form covalent bonds for a few compounds, for example water, so hydrogen 1s1, oxygen 2s2 to be 4, so in order for water to achieve, uh, hydrogen to achieve duplet, oxygen to achieve octet, so hydrogen share two electrons to uh, oxygen in order to achieve 2, 4, 6, 8. So carbon dioxide, so in CO2, each of the carbons share two double bonds with two oxygen atoms in order for the carbons and oxygen both to achieve octet. So if you look carefully, this is 2s2 to p6, 2s2 to p6, and 2s2 to p6. So same goes with ammonia. So ammonia share three of the hydrogen atom. So you have 2, 4, 6, 8. So you have 2s2 to p6 for each of them of the nitrogen, and hydrogen have 1s2. As for ethene, so ethene, inside the ethene contain one double bond. So you have, uh, because of this one double bond, so carbons are able to achieve octet configuration of 2s2 to b6, while hydrogen achieve duplet. As for hydrogen cyanide, or hydrogen cyanide has one single bond with CH and one triple bond in between C and N. So this enable all hydrogen, carbon and nitrogen to achieve octet arrangement. Next is ethanoid acid, CH3COH. 
So you can see in here for each carbon, it shares uh, two, uh, two, uh, one of its electrons with three hydrogen atoms to form eight electrons. If you see carefully, so in this C, you have a two, four, six, eight. So eight electrons also. And for each of the respective oxygen, they also achieve that configuration. Now, this is the structure for tetrachloromethane. So in tetrachloromethane, each of the chlorine shares one electron with carbon, while uh, so in order to help the carbon to achieve octet arrangement, so 2, 4, 6, 8, so chlorine also 2, 4, 6, 8. Whereas in ethane, uh, C, between, C, between C and C atom, they share a triple bond in between them, so in order to achieve octets in here. So later we'll have a proper procedure for us to learn how to actually construct a Lewis structure systematically. So note that in ethene, hydrogen, cyanide, and ethanol acid, in all the valence electrons are used in bonding, there are no lone pair electrons for carbon. In fact, most of the stable molecule containing carbon, carbon does not have lone pair electrons in their carbon atoms. So in the formation of multiple bonds, we say that multiple bonds are shorter than single bond. So bond length is defined as the distance between the two nuclei of the covalently bonded atoms in the molecule. So for a given pair of atoms such as carbon and nitrogen, uh, triple bonds are shorter than double bond, in which terms are shorter than single bond. So the shorter the multiple bond are more stable than a single bond. So covalently, uh, covalently bond not only exists in a neutral molecule, but it also exists in some ions. For example, if you have carbonates ion, so this is how the carbonates ion looks like. So you have CO3 2 minus. And this is the ionic structure for cyanide ion. So each cyanide ion, so you have a lone pair electron in each carbon and nitrogen. Sulfate ion, you have a uh, two single bond SO, two double bond SO in here, so that um, this is how the structure of sulfate looks like and the nitrate ions, this is how the nitrate ions looks like so uh, all these are examples of ions which have a covalent bond in them okay so uh, a few things that you like you like to take notes in here is for example sulfur in here you can see that sulfur can have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 electrons so why can sulfur have 12 electrons so we shall now explain why sulfur can have 12 electrons now, from the Lewis structure sketch above sulfate, we can see that center metal atom of sulfur has more than eight electrons. So for this molecule described, so we say that this molecule which has uh, which has more than eight electrons are usually located at period three and below, as the center atoms has empty d orbitals available to expand the number of electron position in the center atom. So these center atoms from period two, such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, can only maximum. Uh, allocate maximum of 8 electrons because they do not have empty d orbitals available. For example, both phosphorus and nitrogen elements form, are from group 15 with a valence electron of ns2 and p3. Now, both of them can form ncl3 and pcl3 respectively when we add with limited amount of chlorine. However, under excess chlorine, only pcl5 can be formed, not ncl5. So why is it that only pcl5 can be formed but not ncl5? So this is due to uh, phosphorus, which is a period 3, uh, from a, a p elements from a period 3 has empty d orbitals to expand octet. However, nitrogen, which is from a period 2, does not have empty orbital d orbitals, okay, and can only allocate a maximum of 8 electrons in its shell. So that is why nitrogen cannot present in NCl5. So some of the other examples that can have more than 8 electrons are phosphorus pentachloride, okay, and then sulfur hexafluoride, bromine pentachloride and xenon tetrafluoride so you can see that most of the center atoms has either 10 or 12 uh, electrons inside them uh, while the surrounding atoms are in octet arrangement there are also some stable covalent compound which have less than eight electrons in the center atom so we call this as an incomplete octet so the center atoms are usually metals with great number of valence electrons with a small atomic radii such as uh, beryllium boron and aluminium so there are only three uh, molecules that we learned so far which has incomplete octet so for example becl2 so this is the lewis structure of becl2 so note that b only have four electrons Boron trifluoride is another example where if you not boron only have six. Same goes with aluminum chloride also have six. So this compound possible possess stability due to their short bond length between the center atom and surround atom. So furthermore, they can form resonance structure between the center atom and surround atom. So which later we shall introduce what is this. 
There are also some molecules which contain an odd number of electrons. Among the most common compounds are nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. So this is the Lewis structure of the nitrogen monoxide. So where you have a single electrons in here, whereas uh, for nitrogen dioxide, you also have a single electron in here. Uh, but probably this should be contained another lone pair electron here. Okay. So um, for these odd electrons, we call them as radicals. Okay, we call them as radicals. So most of these radicals are highly reactive. So the reason is because they, uh, the reason is that there is a tendency for this unpaired electron to form a covalent bond with an unpaired electron. So for example, when two of the molecule of nitrogen dioxide combine, eventually you form a new compound of dinitrogen tetraoxide. So uh, for your information, nitrogen dioxide is brown in color. So um, dinitrogen tetraoxide is colorless gas. So later we will learn chemical equilibria. This too is a common gas that we will discuss in terms of its usefulness. Okay, so I think uh, that is all for the introductions towards the uh, electrons. So I think this is the second video. See you later.